We come from a planet called Uxma. I don't know why I wanted to say that. I just like saying that word. Uxma. Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Attorneys review for Power Play, which is episode 15 of season 5 of Star Trek Next Generation. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review every episode of Star Trek Next Generation one episode at a time. In this video, I cover the fifth season episode, Power Play. So Power Play is uh, the episode where the Enterprise discovers an old distress signal from a ship that was lost 200 years ago, and they go to a planet to investigate, and Troy insists that there's life down there, so Troy, Riker, and um, Data go down in the shuttle because the transporters aren't working, and the shuttle crashes, but O'Brien does some magic and gets the transporter to work and beams down with some enhancers in order to beam the away team back but then they are attacked by the storm and unbeknownst to anyone at this stage um, three of the members of the away team are inhabited by alien beings um, other, but not Riker because he was injured and apparently they're not willing or able to move through pain so um, once the team gets back they try to get the Enterprise to move to the southern polar region and when uh, they are unable to do that they stage a uh, takeover of the ship uh, however they are thwarted and so the um, three aliens go to um, 10 forward and take hostages there and so then a hostage situation ensues where uh, they attempt to rescue the hostage and it fails and they are nearly died uh, and um, these aliens insist that they're actually the um, souls of the crew member of the lost Starfleet ship and that they just want their um, bones or their remains to be transported back Back to Earth so they can rest. Uh, however, Picard, of course, sees through this bullshit and they go through to the uh, cargo bay to beam uh, the remains on board, but really they're beaming more aliens on board and they reveal that they're actually um, prisoners that were marooned on that moon, which is a penal colony, um, uh, 500 years ago, and that they tried to use the um, other Starfleet ship to escape and were unable to do so. However, the Enterprise D is more powerful, and so they intend to take over everyone on, on the ship. But um, the bridge crew um, managed to intercede and put the aliens in a um, force field. And Picard threatens to blow them all out into space unless they leave the ship. So then they agree to do so. So, um, watch. I've watched a few reviews for this one. Not a whole lot. But the ones I watched were really positive on this uh, episode I was looking through the patron comments that I'm going to read at the end of this video I didn't read all of them but I looked at the ratings that were given and apparently the patron supporters were also very positive on this episode so this is going to be uh, one of those instances where I disagree with my patron supporters and also disagree with the common opinion i being held about this episode. That's not to say I think it's a terrible episode, but it's one I would think the word mediocre fits. Because here's the thing. When I first saw this episode um, when I was 12 years old, I loved it because it was lots of phaser fighting and that's not something that Star Trek usually does and I was like oh wow next especially next generation they're doing like phaser fighting and this is exciting but then the more I got older um the less I liked this episode I remember when I was in my 20s staying in a hotel I think I was going you know traveling for to see a concert or something and just flipping through the channels and seeing the oh, TNG was on I might as well watch that nothing had it better to do and it was this episode and I remember thinking yeah I actually don't like this episode <laughs> it's kind of boring and here is my problem with this episode in a nutshell 
there's really not much to it. There's really nothing beneath the surface. Even good action stories, action movies, um, the ones that I like anyway, have something beneath it. I like really good character stories or a deeper sort of meaning behind it. Maybe some commentary or maybe just an interesting mind puzzle or something. Whereas this episode to me just seems very surface level. And also, and I'll get, I guess I'll jump into this right now because there's some specifics about what how they unravel the plot of who these alien creatures are that I think was mishandled because there's other ways that I think that this could have been more interesting that they didn't do. So first of all, <clears throat> getting into the crux of the problem is that the fact that these aliens claim to be the claims to be Captain Schumar of the Essex and this is my first officer and here's my security officer when they're clearly not acting that way and I think Worf even said oh maybe being disembodied for centuries caused them to get a bit cranky or whatever um so several things about this the way they talk about it is like oh we're spirits souls and we want our bodies moved to earth so we can rest instantly tells you that this is bullshit instantly gives it away as total bullshit and of course Picard is not going to buy this total bullshit no one's on the crew is going to buy this bullshit either if this was the original series or perhaps Enterprise where they act like they're 12 years old then <laughs> maybe they would buy it but on Next Generation of course they're going to see it's bullshit now if your question is well what else would you have them do well I do have a very specific answer for that Technobabble that would be more in keeping with Next Generation. That would be more in keeping with um, stuff that those characters in this show would buy or are used to or something that me as an audience member might buy. So yeah, they could have used your stereotypical technobabble saying that, oh, the ionic field of the atmosphere like put our you know consciousness out of phase and then trapped it through the technobabble type force field in our technobabble and we need to use the reverse the polarity on the thing. And see, that I would buy. That would fit with next gen and that's actually something I thought that when the very first time I saw this episode, I thought that's what they were inferring at first until she said, oh, we're spirits, souls, and take our bodies to rest. I'm like, okay, that's, of course that's not the case. Like, that's bullshit. And then, so it makes it way too obvious that um, these people are lying, and so then the whole thing becomes less interesting to me. It would have actually have been more interesting if it was, like, if we say the technobabble nonsense bullshit, because then, even if you reveal, have the same reveal that these are aliens that are prisoners on this planet or whatever, it actually makes that revelation a bit more shocking, a bit more of a, you know, a surprise when you think, oh, it's not the reverse technobabble nonsense, they were just making all that shit up. Um, but as it is, when they reveal, oh, we're actually prisoners from a planet called Uxma, um, you're like, yeah, of course you are. Like, duh. <laughs> like, you're not spirits. But here, I will give you one further what they should have done. They should have actually made these the, um, the crew of the Essex. To me, that would have been the most interesting scenario. Um, now, part of the thing is that Picard is saying, oh, well, you're not acting like a Starfleet officer. You know, a Starfleet officer wouldn't take hostages and, and do all this crazy shit. Um... So, first of all, yes, maybe tone down their behavior, particularly that of Data's. Tone it down a bit. But also say, yeah, we, no, we've been floating around as consciousness for centuries and we're gone a bit crazy. I could buy that. Um, but not as spirits, but if they had the technobabble, oh, there's something in the ionic atmosphere, you have to reverse the polarities to uh, do the <laughs> Eisenberg comps, I don't know, whatever. Well, I'm not very good at writing technobabble, but that I would buy. 
I, I would totally buy that, and I think it would be way more interesting if the, they were actually the crew of the Essex that had gone a bit loopy after being trapped in this, you know, storm of a shitty planet for centuries, and they will do anything to get their, you know, to get their crew back, and maybe their, their bodies are gone, so the only way they could come back is by taking over the crew of the Enterprise. And this similar episodes of Star Trek and other shows that do stuff like that, where someone who's, like, reasonable or in the team with the good bug guys but or have been thrust in this, like, you know, difficult situation suffered a whole bunch of trauma where they go a bit, you know, mad and they, and they do something that's a bit off, but they just say the ends justify the means. What comes to mind immediately that's kind of similar in that fashion is Equinox. How the Equinox crew, just because they were trapped in the Delta Quadrant, same as Voyager, but they were in a much smaller ship with less resources, and so they revert to uh, doing a lot more shady shit, and when Vo they discover Voyager, and Voyager is, you know, uh, threatening to put all that at risk, they are willing to attack Voyager and actually do damage to their crew. But you buy it, even though part two sucked, but that's a <laughs> story for another time. But you buy it. You buy that Starfleet officers would behave like that and attack other Star Starfleet officers because of the trauma they suffered, because of the ordeal they went through. And I, in the same similar fashion, you could buy a crew. And plus it would be, because this episode obviously was made before Enterprise was, so it would be an interesting way to explore... Um, Star early Starfleet from 200 years ago and what that was like, um, and so I to me I think that would have been way more interesting than what they did do. What they did do was uh, it's really meh. It's like okay, they're aliens from a penal colony that tried to take over the ship. Why do I care? <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. Um, and that's the thing. So. As I said before, I don't totally hate this episode because it is a little suspenseful. It is a little exciting. It is interesting to see them thrust in this difficult situation. Um, to see uh, Troy and Data and O'Brien being taken over by... By the way, that's not an original plot, having a main character taken away, taken over by something evil. I mean, that's been done before. But, you know, it's interesting that they turn it into a hostage situation, and I like particularly how they use Ro um, in this episode because she's kind of a new character, and she hadn't been in that many uh, episodes uh, so far, and here she feels part of the crew, and she's, like, doing everything she can to save people, so I think it actually did a bit to sort of develop her character. And yes, the phaser fights were cool, uh, and it is interesting to see an episode of TNG with phaser fights like this. Um, and yeah, even seeing, like, you know, Jordy and Crusher and Roe and Riker trying to find a way to rescue the hostages. Now, the stuff with... Again, like, the the data acting all like, oh, we're gonna kill everyone, was kind of like, mm, yeah, whatever. And, um... Troy's like saying, oh, you have to take our spirits. That was stupid. And um, O'Brien like harassing Keiko is like, oh no, she's taken over by an alien that's harassing his own wife. I'm like, again, whoop de doo Like, it's not interesting to me. It's just not. So the majority of this episode is kind of dull. Um, and also the ending, where they, you know, outsmart these aliens by having them go to the cargo bay. Well, like, why didn't O'Brien, who's, you know, he has O'Brien's memories and everything, why didn't he be like, uh, they just want us to go to the cargo bay so they can blow us out into space. Let's go to a transporter room instead. Like, he was smart enough to outsmart them when Roe Ro tried to, you know, leave the uh, transporters in the shuttle bays on, so, um, but he caught that, but why didn't he catch the fact that, hey, and it seemed more obvious that they wanted us to go to the cargo bay so they can blow us out into fucking space. <sighs> and also, it just seemed to resolve rather quickly. 
you know, part of me was thinking, well, what do these aliens care about if the other prisoners are killed? Wouldn't they be a bit more selfish? But then again, they would be killed as well because Picard's talking about blowing them all into space. But wouldn't some of them would rather die? Wouldn't they think death would be a better alternative than spending, like, centuries and has, like, little balls of light and a very chaotic world? Lucky for the plot and Picard, that's not the case. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't really have much else to say about this episode. And that's part of the major problem that I have with it. Is that there's really not much to this episode. And I wish there was. I think, as I said, if they may actually made them the crew of the Essex, that would have actually been way more interesting. At the moment, it's like, oh, they're aliens that are lying about it. But... Well, first of all, of course, because they said they're spirits, and all, that's obvious bullshit. Um, and secondly, whoop-de-doo, like, it's just another invasion of the body snatchers-esque type episode, but not done particularly well, and, you know, the hostage situation was somewhat interesting, I guess. Um, but yeah, other than that... There's not really any much to this episode. Now, I will say, this was written by Maurice Hurley. It will be the last episode he wrote for Star Trek. Um, and, of course, Mar Maurice Hurley was the showrunner for season end of season one and, and the entirety of season two. He left the show at the end of season two. Um, he came back as a freelance writer to write Galaxy's Child in season four, and then he's back apparently again to write this episode. I don't know if it was written earlier, and they just took a long time to make it. Maybe they originally came up with the script during season two. I'm not sure. I didn't find that in my research. But either way, it has... It does feel like a Maurice Hurley script because Maurice Hurley was not a particularly good writer and just used a lot of tropes from, and in some cases sitcom tropes, but this case is not a sitcom trope. It's just more of a sci-fi trope. Oh, you know what? Actually, I will say this episode feels the most like an original series episode. It feels like something the original series would do that they encounter these aliens that claim to be from a, you know, Federation ship from a century ago and it turns out they're just evil aliens. Like, I could really picture the original series doing this. Like, really picture it. And, of course, the first two seasons of TNG were a lot more like the original series, so it kind of follows to me uh, and that's funny because I've seen a lot of other people say, oh, this episode feels like an original series episode or feels like a season one or two episode. And I almost always disagree with that. I'm like, I don't actually see it. Like even Devil's Do, which was originally supposed to be for phase two, I could definitely, I can see somewhat uh, ties to the original series, but I think they made the episode different enough where it didn't really feel like an original series episode anymore. And there are other episodes where people have said this and I've been like, no, I actually don't see it. This episode, I haven't heard anyone else say that. And I totally agree. I totally think that this has one of the most TOS feels out of any TNG episode. Um, but that is just me. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say, really, about this episode. So now I would like to thank my Patreon supporters for supporting me on Patreon. It's very much appreciated, even though, uh, or especially since you, you can all disagree with me on this one, but I do really appreciate uh, everyone's support. So I would like to give a big special thanks to Brandon Nailhouse. Thank you so much for all the support you've given throughout the years. And i also like to give a shout out to Antarius, Greg Marley, Francisco, Chuck Hooks, Kyrie091, Anthony D. Benedictus, Ricky, Manny Jester, Joel Lavals, Alessandro Miguelicio, Norman Buckwald, Stephen Kennedy, Brenton Berg, and Allison Fordyce. Thank you all so very, very much for your support. 
So, we do have a few Patreon comments on this episode. First comment is from Antarius, who says, The shuttle crash landing immediately created strong Voyager vibes for me. Hopefully, the Enterprise has infinite shuttles like Voyager. Again, Data is taken over at least parts of the ship. He uh, really is a serious security risk with his capabilities. Brent Spiner shows his good acting skills playing the possessed Data. Nice to have both O'Brien and Roe in this episode. I never get tired of saying that. It would have been so great to have Roe as a regular helmsman. It was a very good idea to make Troy the leader of the group. And in this way, gave her uh, really a lot to do in this episode. Maybe the writers got this thought from Sears' performance, Sirtis's, sorry, performance as the plan has failed, alien. Uh, since I am not a big fan of drama episodes, I really enjoyed this episode after the long streak of drama episodes we recently had. My rating is an 8 out of 10. Now, it's a good point about Roe and O'Brien, because watching this episode did remind me that during Season 5, as it was airing, Roe and O'Brien were favorite supporters, supporting cast, and they um, there was like a lot of novels and comic books and stuff that supported them more, and so it made sense that when they said, hey, let's do a spin spinoff, let's bring over these two supporting characters because they're fan favorites. Now, obviously, Roe didn't make it because Michelle Forbes didn't want to do a whole another series, but O'Brien did, and they just made up another Bajoran character similar to Roe, but Kira, so, and also good. So, but yeah, it just reminded me of how these two were the favorites, and it was episode like this definitely showcases this and disaster really showcases both of them and as far as marina Sirtis giving something to do yeah i enjoy that i like that and i think she did a good job playing the bad guy here but i wish they actually wrote troy better and gave troy more to do rather than let's just have her possessed by an evil alien in order to get marina Sirtis to actually be able to perform i think that's a failure on the writers just my humble opinion. Anyway, next comment is from Norman Buckwald who says, Okay, this is one of the underrated episodes of TNG. I admit when I first saw this episode when it originally aired, I did not think much of it, thinking it was a standard Trek episode, which, yes, it was. This isn't the first and most certainly not the last time the trope of aliens possessing members of Starfleet happened. However... What makes this episode a great watch is the script itself and the acting, especially of one Marina Sirtis. I suspect the writers and the showrunners <coughs> were impressed with her acting skills when she uh, was possessed by the Paxson representative in Clues and gave her this role, which I have to admit is definitely one of the best in TNG. Then, much to my surprise, uh, since sometimes Brent Spiner can turn to ham acting, which for me includes lore in a certain holodeck uh, episode, let alone evil soon, he also comes across quite effective. Meany does fine too, even though I think the script goes awry a little bit between he and Keiko and Molly, but even then, and Jordy and Rose's efforts to, um, for trying to rescue in this episode, how Picard handles himself in all this, and it's truly a strong episode about aliens trying to escape their penal colony. I'll give this nine energy being spots uh, out of ten. Yeah, <laughs> so I do have, will have to agree to disagree with you on that. Um, I didn't think Spiner's acting was any better than what he does to Lore, to be honest. In fact, some people said <clears throat> that it seemed like he was just doing Lore. And I actually agree. And I do agree. I think, honestly, that his acting was a bit ham in this episode. I think he went overboard with, I have no problem with killing you. Like, that's... And then, like, lifting up a card and just being like, oh, let me rip off their ears. He didn't say that. It's from whom God's destroyed. <laughs> but essentially, like, I don't know. I wasn't a fan of it. Um, and it was more the writing than the acting, to be fair. But still, uh, I wasn't a fan of the writing. I wasn't a fan. And I don't think Troy's 
turn as a possessed alien. I mean, sure, Sturgis did a, a good performance, but I don't think it was anywhere near as interesting as the Pax and some clues because that was actually a good episode and it had a really strong mystery and great character stories and a lot of intrigue where this was just alien beings take over crew members and put, hold the crew hostage and the crew tries to rescue them. Very standard stuff, as you said. But anyway, next comment is from Stephen Kennedy, who says, Before we talk about data being a security risk or not, these are my ratings for the following episodes. The Mind's Eye, 9 out of 10. Redemption, 8 out of 10. Darmok, 10 out of 10. Mountain Red, Red, when the walls fell, meaning when Mount Doom was destroyed. Conundrum, 10 out of 10. Unification, 7 out of 10. There's only three episodes that Data was really taken over and he couldn't do anything about it. The Schizoid Man, or sorry, the Schizoid Man, Brothers, and Descent, and they have something in common. Granddad, Dad, Brother. Dana's off switch is dumb. While the location is behind his back, it should be located inside his head, and Data is the only person who can turn himself off. That part is a security risk. A hacker, a hacker could easily use Data for his own gain with the location of his off switch. Power play doesn't count because Troy and O'Brien were also taken over. A Fistful Datas was just a fun episode and on the holodeck. Phantasms don't care as it is a silly episode and was uh, and was it the Enterprise computer that was taken over. Dino himself and Conundrum Data just lost his memory. Uh, Masks, another done episode. I don't know what happened. I don't even care. I don't know if there are any more episodes, but Mark will say them if I left a few out. So, if Data is a security risk, so is the rest of the cast of TNG. The whole crew were taken over by a game that gave people multiple orgasms for some reason. Genesis, the Enterprise became a zoo and was open to the public. Picard for not letting a tra- for letting a traitor remain on the Enterprise. Beverly had a candle issue. Barkley taken over by the Scytherians. Riker's way too friendly with women. Could be too horny and meet the wrong woman. Oh yes, he did. The game. Jordy holodeck addiction. The Romulans kidnapped two officers and outsmarted them in a few episodes. Worf, I can't think of anything. Um. I can think of something for Worf. He's um, as vulnerable to falling barrels. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not sure what point I'm making here, but stuff happens with other characters. And what about some episodes with Q? Anyway, number seven on Mark's top saying list. Let's talk about the gr- uh, this great episode. I like everyone in this episode, and yes, even the traitor is also good. Riker passes something um, to her during sex in the last episode. Maybe it was a conscience. So my rating is 10. Data was auditioning for Darth Vader, and Troy was preparing for her role as a Romulan, and I wonder... Does Data have virus protection that is updated once a month out of 10? Yeah, Stephen Kinney, I do appreciate all the support you've given throughout the years. That's why I will tolerate your row hate. But I don't understand it, though. Anyway, (laughs) anyway. So, as far as Data not being a security risk, I actually agree. Uh, I actually can't think of any other episodes that you didn't mention where he came off as a security risk. Fistful of Data is not really a fun holodeck episode. It's a stupid holodeck episode. <laughs> That's just my opinion. But no, Data wasn't, you know, he wasn't really a security risk. That had to do with the, the computer going haywire or something. Phantasms, 
is actually a much better episode. That's not a silly episode. That's a good episode. But it wasn't neither the Enterprise computer or Data was taken over as Data was actually warning the crew about these, you know, viruses that were, like, eating the crew alive. And it was just the subconscious that perceived these beings. And so it was actually a good thing that Data was taken over in that episode because he saved the crew. Uh, yeah, Dino himself in Conundrum, you're right, uh, he just lost his memories, um, and Masks, um, yeah, Data was actually taken over in Masks, uh, but he was taken over by all these different beings, and the whole ship was taken over, so it's kind of like you say with this episode, it wasn't just Data, it was two other crew members, but in Masks, it wasn't just Data, it was the whole ship. So that's I would put that in the same category as this episode, and um, yeah, and you're right about all these other um, stuff that characters could be taken over by other beings as well. The game, the entire crew was taken, except for Data. Data was the only one, by the way, who wasn't the security. Well, other than Wesley because he's a Mary Sue, but other than Wesley, uh, well, it wasn't for Data, then Wesley would have been taken over too. So Data was the opposite of the security risk in that episode. He was the one that saved the ship and everyone else was the security risk. Jordy forgot to mention a mind's eye where he was a security risk because he was brainwashed by Romulans and Picard you also could have brought up Allegiance when he was replaced by a replicant that looked like him and liked to sing drinking songs and almost destroyed the whole ship. So... I actually very much agree with you, even though I disagree with your row hate. I agree that Data isn't any more of a security risk than anyone else on the Enterprise. Now, the three episodes you mentioned that had to do with relatives taking over his body, Descent... Yeah, that's a stupid episode where they turn Data evil, which actually shouldn't have happened, so I don't count that. Schizoid Man was a boring, dumb episode anyway, so who cares? And Brothers was just poorly written, and I talked about this in that episode, that it actually, Data shouldn't have been able to take over the ship so easily, not because Data isn't awesome, but because the Enterprise security sucked in that episode, and it actually should have been better. So that's more of a security problem than a data problem, in my humble opinion. And ultimately, all three of those episodes are bad writing problems. <laughs> and so whenever data, most of these times when data seem to be a security risk, it is bad writing. It's the writers not doing a good job. My humble opinion, of course. Um, but yeah... 10 out of 10, okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thank you so much, patrons, for your comments. So my rating for Power Play out of 10 is going to be a 5 average. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to give this episode a 6 before I started recording, but sometimes I can change my mind as I'm talking about it, and I just bringing up more issue after more issue after more issue. And that is, it's not a terrible episode because it is... You know, suspenseful. I do, as I say, I like seeing you know, like the crew trying to rescue the hostages, and they actually utilize Ro and Jordy well in this episode. And it is interesting that Picard is getting like being clever and trying to outsmart his captors, but there's just nothing. There's not enough meat on his bones, in my opinion. Like, I, and plus, bringing up the whole spirits thing just pisses me off. Because it makes it, it's bad writing, it ruins the whole episode, it makes it way too obvious that they're lying, and so it would have been way more interesting uh, if um, they came up with, as I said, Technobabble BS, which is more believable, and it would be more interesting still if they actually weren't lying and were members of the Essex crew, that would be a very fascinating plot. So they tease me with a much more fascinating idea, but say, no, we're not actually doing that fascinating idea, we're doing this boring, evil aliens take over the crew. And they resolved it pretty easily. So now I can't give it a positive rating. I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. Sorry. I really don't understand. This, both this episode and the previous episode, Conundrum, which I gave a 6 out of 10, multiple people have been giving that 9 or 10 out of 10. And, uh, like, 
and there's some reviews. I watch give it a 5 out of 5 or 10 out of 10, and I just don't understand. I think both of these episodes are just average, honestly. I don't understand why people like them so much, especially this one, which is... I mean, there's nothing to it. <laughs> there's nothing beneath the surface. And maybe it's just me. Maybe I just don't like those alien takeover crew members or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that is it for my review of Power Play. So, coming up next on my channel. Uh, let's see. Um... Saturday will be my review for Ethics, the whole the barrel thing, which I mentioned earlier. Ah, uh, yes, the barrel. And then Sunday night or Monday morning, I will review episode three of House of the Dragon. Uh, Tuesday, I'll be over on Patreon to revisit my review for The Outcast for my Patreon supporters. Wednesday, sticking on Patreon. Uh, for another revisited, this time revisiting my review for Calls in Effect. And then Thursday, you guessed it, still on Patreon, uh, for my fate Patreon supporters doing another revisited, uh, this time revisiting my review for The First Duty. Duty. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's what's coming up on my channel. Be sure to check me out for that and check out my channel as I continue to cover Star Trek Next Generation and as I cover House of the Dragon and many other shows as well. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.